Time for another edition here of the Cougar Coaches Show, Mediacom Channel 22 and online too at ColumbiaCougars.com. My name is Cosmo with the head coach and athletic director of Columbia College, Bob Burchard. Coach, welcome back to another show. Thanks, Cosmo. It's uh, fun to be in basketball season, and we've had a great, uh, great fall of sports and heading into the winter activities. As indeed, the overlap of uh, the events at a volleyball team, their season ended a little earlier than then uh, Coach Washington was hoping, but they still made another run to the national tournament and, uh, and another round. And Coach John Klein's women's team uh, in their second season uh, as a program, uh, setting quite a bar for themselves, uh, making it to the national tournament, winning a conference championship, quite a feather in their cap in year two. Well, it's, it's fascinating the way you put that because of the consistency of volleyball, that they, they continue to, to play at such a high level and somewhere around 19 straight conference championships, an amazing number. And, um, and then for the women's soccer team on the other end of the spectrum in their second year to uh, win conference regular season and postseason championships and really play great in, a, in the national tournament setting. Um, disappointing that you lose in penalty kicks, um, which um, is just heartbreaking for all teams, I think. But uh, we're, we're just so proud of how quickly they got to the national level. It was a fun night. I know the, your men's team had a ball game that night, and it ended it just about the time they were heading into penalty kicks, and everybody kind of huddled on the floor and was watching the, uh, the web feed broadcast of the, of the PKs up on the, on the Cougar Vision screen. And, and a year ago when the men were in the tournament, the women's team, and there was the big events here, everybody gathered around on campus and, and watched them play as well besides, when they can't be here at home. Cosmo, I think the, the last uh, couple of weeks um, have really accented um, our collegiate community in Columbia. Um, all, all the activities you just described are very commonplace um, from a close-knit athletic family like we feel like we have at, at Columbia College. And then our uh, sister school, the university across the, the way having the, a similar type weekend to where you're having all these major events take place at the same time. Um, a lot of high level success. Um, it, it just, I just think accents how much fun it is to, um, to live in Columbia. And I don't want to forget Tim Cornell and the cross country hosting the conference tournament as well. I know he was very excited and proud of being able to put that event on here in, in Columbia as well the, in the second year of cross country. And well, I think we took six or seven runners to the, to the national event. Um, it was fun to, to host the event out at Cosmo Park. They did a great job with, with that event. And then um, Lindsey Martin um, being our first um, NAI, NAI All-American in that sport. Um, she had a great year, and it was great to see her recognized at that level. Basketball team for you, uh, number uh, one in the country now at 9-0 and after a win the other night here at home. Uh, back to the top spot in the uh, in the polls in the NAIA in the first regular season poll. Talk about the uh, the run for the first wins of the season here at nine and zero. Where are things at with you right now? Well, I think we obviously have gotten off to a real nice start, um, Cosmo. We had a lot of questions going into the year in terms of our inside play um, and how quickly we could get some I, we thought really good players up to speed. I think it did happen um, at a, at a pretty quick rate. Um, we um, kind of a little different uh, this time around. Our conference has expanded, and, and so we actually have had a little taste of conference play already with some games uh, on the road uh, in this past week. Um, I think that um, our schedule has been really balanced through those nine games. We had some games that were you know, not, not quite as challenging, and then uh, I've had uh, some really good matchups with high-level teams, two games with Central Methodist who I think has got an outstanding team, um, uh, a great road win at Missouri Valley, a very difficult place to play. Um, and then uh, having Hope International, um, our second round opponent from the national tournament last year in a, an amazing game that was a one point game um, that uh, came through Missouri and we had an opportunity to, to compete against them and, and did well, well in that game. So I liked the, our balance and scheduling in the, um, in the first nine games. Um, I think we're very fortunate to, to come through those undefeated at this point. And, um, you know, I, I think our team is evolving. I, I, I don't think we're at any, even close to any peaking point. And it's amazing, just as you mentioned, that balance of games, it almost seems like there's 15 that have been played, but it's, it's been the nine. And you did have the, the thriller where uh, at Central Methodist where it ended up with a buzzer beater shot for you guys to come away uh, with the win earlier in the year. But uh, as you mentioned, some of the guys getting up to speed with the newcomers uh, like Patrick Massey and, 
and uh, Jeremy Nolan have been uh, very impressive with, uh, from what we've been able to watch them here at home and, and check the stat line when they're on the road. Very mature um, individuals and players, um, Cosmo. I, um, in, in both instances, um, I think their, their basketball high, IQ is extremely high. Um, they, they play the game at a pace that I really like. Um, I think they, they uh, like um, playing within our style. Um, and I think that was kind of a, a breakthrough um, for them early on, um, particularly for um, big kids. So many teams, you know, really limit players to, to spots on the floor. And, okay, and Patrick, you're the biggest center around, you know. Put then your you hands need to, up yeah, and block exactly. And, that's it. Yeah. and uh, we don't do that as, as anybody's watched our teams play. And even with a, a player like Jordan Dressler of his size, he would play out the three line. And, and so it took some time to get, uh, to get um, him comfortable into that um, play. And, and um, I think he's, like, again, been a, a real quick study. Jeremy is a multi-skilled player, and so it, uh, what we do really fits his game, and we really felt that when we recruited him. And Jeremy seems to be very even keeled, not too high, not too low, energetic wise. He's out there, and it just doesn't. Nothing seems to to uh, to bother him too much. Very efficient, um, Cosmo, and I, I'm glad you you point that out because he really is not a, an emotional guy, and um, but he's an extremely efficient and thoughtful um, person. Um, he is a math major, and um, so he does think in terms of efficiencies and numbers. And and, um, and being a math major, he's a lot smarter than the coach. I guarantee <laughs> you that. And so uh, I, he's very analytical about his game. And uh, I think you um, really hit it on the uh, hit the nail on the head when you talked about how he um, approaches play. Besides those two, what about some of the other new faces on the team that have uh, maybe surprised you a little bit or, or uh, just in general have, have, uh, have brought their game to the, to the Cougars being ranked number one and, and 9-0? And oh? Well, I think depth is a big part of us being where we are right now, and it always has been in our program. Um, so there are a lot of pieces to this deal on Cosmo. Um, Gerardo uh, Isla has um, really, I think, stepped into – um, uh, our post position is, is really a good balancer to, to Patrick. You know, they, they play off each other. Um, his skill set is different, not quite as um, big you know, in frame and, and in presence defensively, but uh, uh, does more things offensively than, than Patrick does. Um, Malik Ray is a freshman um, out of um, St. Louis, uh, same high school that Pep Stansel came from. Malik is extremely athletic, maybe one of the more athletic uh, guys that we've had in our program. He's very long. Um, he really shows flashes of some amazing play. And as like most freshmen, he all of a sudden, you know, you, you see uh, he's, he's still learning. Um, Travis Vogt uh, at the point guard position um, really, I think, has, uh, has done a great job in, in the early games. Um, where it, when we get into highly competitive situations, his minutes have dropped a little bit because he's got such experienced guys out in front of him. But uh, I think they, they, he's contributed quite a bit as, as well. Um, Gerardo had a bit of an injury. He's been out the, the last two games. Uh, Colt Snyder came in and I thought did a real nice job in, in replacing his minutes. Um, and, and, of course, Marcus Witt and uh, Eric Clark have, have both played roles as well. Um, Eric had a really nice game at Missouri Valley and um, I, I thought really helped us come through that game. I think that the bottom line to this whole conversation, uh, Cosmo, is if, if we were playing golf, it's nice to have a lot of clubs in the bag. <laughs> and I do think we have a lot of clubs in the bag with this team. Most definitely. And you, you saw some great play early out of Zach Rockers. I know he's been battling an injury. He got an early uh, uh, Player of the Week honor in the conference and, and he's battling through. and. And uh, definitely just to be able to see other guys step up and fill those voids, as we've seen on previous teams, uh, it's got to make you feel good. Obviously, you want to get him back out there as quick as possible, but uh, it definitely helps when you have that depth to come off the bench and be able to fill those roles and, and keep winning basketball games. Well, really, one of our objectives it always has been, Cosmo, is to get each one of our guys to their highest level. And um, we work really hard. Coach Brock works extremely hard with them individually to um, get them playing at, at uh, peak performance for where they are in their development. 
And uh, we take a lot of pride in that and uh, for everything we've already talked about in terms of being able to survive things that happen to you over a year. Um, Zach uh, got a stress fracture in his heel. Um, we're not exactly sure the, the recovery time period for that injury. It's a little bit, it's a different spot for that, that type of injury. So we're not sure when and if he'll, he'll get back during the year. So um, you often hear um, football coaches talk about this. You kind of move them over and move them up and, and somebody else has got to play. Yep. And, and that's what the, the guys have done so far. And he's still leading the way over on the bench, even though I know he doesn't want to be in the suit and tie, but uh, he's still uh, had his spot there. And, and you can see him being vocal on the bench as guys came back over during timeouts. We come back, we'll talk about some of the other players that make a big impact. Uh, Devin Griffin, Derek Dilworth, Tanner Sutton picks up a nice a nomination and an honor. We'll talk about that also the upcoming schedule and about how different it is with the new new look to the conference already a couple conference games in before Christmas time. We'll be back talking more Cougar basketball with head coach Bob Burchard right after this on the Cougar Coaches Show here on Mediacom Channel 22.